here we have some purplish blooms from the lemon tree. Yellow blooms from some brassicas. Some collard greens. Purple blossoms from society garlic. Purple blooms from some chrysanthemums. The other day I was talking about the goji plant and I was so surprised that I saw some goji fruit and then I just left them there and continued to film and boy did I regret it that I didn't pull them off and just eat them because the birds will get to them before I do. So when I came back and these three were still there, I ate, I'm eating them right now. And it's so sweet when it's fresh right off the plant. Even if they're not fully large, um, fully grown goji berries, it's best to eat them because they're sweet. And eat them before something else gets to it. And some more blooms from chrysanthemums. And each plant has so many buds, it makes like hundreds of flowers. My hibiscus is starting to open up again as others fade. More nasturtiums flowers. Some pomegranate blooms. More purple society garlic blooms. My Asiatic lily bloom. My yellow mums that are doing great. This chrysanthemum is going to bloom pretty soon, eventually. My yellow Asiatic lily that I bought on clearance. All of my orangey gold colored calendula. Some delicious golden raspberries. Mmm, they're sweet. Some achillea or otherwise known as yarrow, and it's pink. It's really pretty. I love the clusters of flowers. And it's medicinal. My pink and mauve dianthus, which is growing fantastic. Soon I'm gonna have a couple um, giant sunflowers over here. And here's one. Oops, so it's a shade. There's the other. And a lot of zinnias. Tons of canna lilies and hollyhocks. More canna lilies. Purplish blue borge. Everywhere, and the bees love them. Lots of hollyhocks. And the beauty of these are it grows vertically, so it just makes tons and tons of flowers going all the way up. More nasturtium. This is a yellow variety. Orange ones mixed in. That's a fiesta blend. Some orangish red true passion roses. My wonderful new straw flower that So it turns from a pink to a yellow flowers and it sounds like straw when you rustle it and it's very long lasting. I'm probably gonna harvest the flowers and bring them indoors so it'll encourage it to bloom more. And I love the leaves. They're like a fuzzy grayish silver white color. More canna. Tons of roses. Tons of bougainvillea. Pinkish colored nasturtium right next to my red pineapple sage, and that one's doing really big. It's tripled the size. 
It has tripled the size that, since I bought it last year. So there you have it folks. If you grow a lot of variety of plants, they have different colors, they attract different kinds of cr creatures. Um, certain bugs and certain hummingbirds like specific colored plants. And each plant lends not only different shape, different size, so something like this, or like the canna, the hummingbirds like to go and get the nectar from them. So things of different colors, sizes, shapes are specific to um, specific insects and birds that like them. And they also, different plants lend different scents and attract and repel specific things. So if you have a polyculture and you grow different things in your garden, it'll confuse a lot of pests. I mean, I'm growing in this area peppers, brassicas, nasturtium, green onions, I'm trying to grow some basil in this bed, the pineapple sage, and some fennel. Growing onions, and the onions will repel a lot of critters. They don't like the smell of alliums. And um, it didn't say in the books that onions are a companion plant for green beans, but what happened was when I pulled the Bell and Country fire ring out of here that I was growing these green onions in, um, I had a lot of space where I had pulled out some of the onions to eat. And so, I decided, since I have a lot of bare spots and I want to start growing green beans, I threw the seeds in here and they are doing really, really well. And more green beans. I'm trying to grow a ton of it because I love green beans. Uh, this is where I pulled the Bell and Country Fire Ring and I put it over here where I had a little space. And same thing, I have started with green with some onion bulbs and then um, there were a lot of bare spaces so I added some green beans in here seeds and they're growing up and then here's a tomato I added here's another pomegranate treeling and it's already making one bloom And then here's my Asiatic Lily, another one. Not sure the color because it hasn't opened yet. My Gerbera Daisy came back and it'll do a little bit better as the season progresses. Threw a little seed in here. I think it's a sunflower and it'll help stake up this tomato plant. So a ton of pineapple guava coming up. Those are all the blooms that are going to turn into fruit. Some chives that are, have purple blooms and some French lavender. Some fennel that are going to bloom these great big yellow um, umbels of yellow flowers. Sometimes I take anise and fennel and stuff like that and I cut it and throw it into the coop so if the chickens eat it it's good for them it's herbs I'll throw mint in their coop all kinds of stuff to help them um, with their digestive system and also to throw into the throw into their run and into their coop to make the scents a little bit better I think this will be the first year that I get a lot more pineapple guava since I've grown it. Yes, last year I had about, oh, five fruit. And last year the apricot um, tree had several apricots, but then it was eaten by something. And earlier in the year, there were a lot of apricots that dropped out of the tree. But now I am seeing some fruit. Of course, they haven't changed their colors from green to to yellow yet, or orange, that peachy color. 
thanks for joining me today and um, thanks for checking out my videos and I hope that you plant things in your garden and plant along with me and tell me your experiences and enjoy hopefully you enjoy them as much as I do and hope you have a nice wonderful permaculture garden as well have a great day please like subscribe and share my videos and see you in the next one